Let's look at an example for transforming strains. So suppose we're given a strain tensor at a given point in a body in an xy coordinate frame. So in, that tells us that we have a normal strain in the x direction of 100 microstrain. So that's 100 times 10 to the minus 6. Remember, strain has no uh, units to it. And a shear strain between in the xy plane of 50 microstrain. Okay, And remember, this is tensorial shear strain here. And let's go ahead and find what the strain components look like in a coordinate frame that's rotated 45 degrees with respect to the xy coordinate frame. So the setup here is I have x and y, and x prime, y prime is oriented at 45 degrees. And I've also drawn here just sort of representation of this state of strain here, which says that I have an elongational strain in the x direction, that's 100 uh, microstrain, and then there is a positive tensorial shear strain of 50 microstrain, which means 100 engineering microstrain, so the angle here for the change in angle is 100 microstrain, or 100 times 10 to the minus 6 radians, if you want to think about it in terms of rotation. So let's go ahead and see what the strain components are in this 45 degree oriented uh, coordinate frame. And we'll go ahead and do it two ways. So method one is to use the rotation matrix technique. So we have epsilon prime is equal to r epsilon r transpose. So here I have epsilon 100, 50, 50, 0. I have my rotation matrix to go 45 degrees. Remember the rotation matrix is cosine minus sine sine cosine and theta is equal to pi over 4 so all my sines and cosines are 1 over root 2 so that's easy to fill in. Over here I have the transpose so the minus sign sits over here and now all I'll have to do is multiply out these three matrices. So if I multiply the second two I, I get this result and now I can multiply the first with this and I end up with a situation where I have 100 microstrain in the x prime direction, same as I had before, and I end up with minus 50 microstrain with respect to the, the x prime, y prime axes. So this is y prime there. Okay, so that's just simply a straight mathematical uh, way of doing the calculation. If we want, we could also do a more circle calculation, so this time more circle strain. So I plot normal strains horizontally and tensorial shear strains going down. And I first plot the center of the circle, which would be the mean strain, which in this case is 50 microstrain. So I plot that on the horizontal axis. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the, uh, the strains associated with the x direction. So I go ahead and plot 150. So 100 normal strain, 50 shear strain. And that becomes a point on my more circle of strain, and now I can draw the circle of those two. And so I have my circle, more circle of strain, and what I need to do is rotate by 45 degrees, which means I'm going to rotate by 90 degrees on the more circle, and that then gives me the state of strain associated with the x prime axis. So I can read off from the diagram here that the normal strain in the x prime direction is also going to be 100 microstrain, so that checks with the result he I had here. And I can also read off that the x prime y prime shear strain is going to be negative 50 microstrain, and so that checks also with this result that I had here. And you can also do that analytically from the circle by calculating its radius, which happens to be 2 uh, times 50 microstrain, or square root of 2. Yeah. That allows us then to also come to the exact same result. So just looking at the circle and the geometry of the diagram, I have this result here. 100 microstrain in the x prime direction and minus 50 microstrain in the x prime, y prime axis. So that means that when I draw the uh, an element of material and I try and draw what it looks like after deformation, it's going to have some kind of extension in the x prime direction, but the angle between the x prime and the y prime directions is going to be increasing now. And so this angle here is going 
to be represented by my tensorial shear strain. And again, I have to multiply it by 2 to get to the engineering, so this is 100 times 10 to the minus 6 radians again. But notice that I have an opening of the angle here. So I start with a 90 degree angle, now I end up with a larger angle here by 100 times 10 to the minus 6 radians. Now if I also want to be able to calculate out that I have zero normal strain in the y prime direction, I need to think about how I get to the y prime axis. So the x prime axis is given to me in one direction, and I've gotten there by doing a rotation of 2 times pi over 4 on this circle. If I want to continue to rotate this axis, I could rotate it this way. That would give me the y prime direction. So that would be going an additional 90 degrees here, which implies that on the circle, I need to go an additional 180 degrees. So if I go an additional 180 degrees, I end up on the opposite end of the circle from the point that I'm sitting at. And so if I do that, I'll go pi on the circle, and I find out then that epsilon y prime, y prime is equal to 0. So I get the exact same result that I had before, which is good. And so that's also another useful fact when working with more circle both stress and strain, is that if you determine the stresses or the strains associated with one coordinate direction, if you want to know it on the orthogonal face, you just go diametrically opposite that point on the circle, and that gives you the result that you're looking for.